I was raised Christian, and some of the churches I went to taught the messed up notion that to even think something sinful is a sin. That's an awful thing to teach to a creative person. The biggest problem with that message for me was that the whole Jesus thing never made any sense. Jesus died for your sins. Well, as a comedian, I've talked about this before, there's a comedian who said something to the degree of, I hit myself in the foot with a shovel for your mortgage. Yeah, that doesn't follow any sort of reasonable logic. Yeah, Jesus died for your sins. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So when I got taught that to think something sinful is a sin, it made me mentally beat myself up constantly. And I most definitely lived in fear. Fear of judgment by God. And my thoughts were, well, if I attempt to live a sin-free life, I could be redeemed in the end. Eventually, I got out of religion. I started off going into paganism. And then I went agnostic. And then I went sort of pseudo-atheist. And then I eventually dropped religion altogether on August 13th, 2013 at 8.50 p.m., where I realized that all this time that I thought that God was judging me, it was just me judging myself, and that I could finally stop doing that. Now, granted, I'm not a full-fledged atheist now. I'm kind of a pantheist, but I'm certainly not believing in some person sitting there judging everything I'm doing. But before I had that realization, I would build what I like to call autistic lists of what not to do around people. And when I say autistic, I mean, I don't really, it, it kind of seems that way. Because, I mean, it'd be lists of thousands and thousands of things not to do. Even, you know, don't look in this direction when you say this word or something, you know. Just thousands of things. And these lists would get bigger and bigger as time goes on, because I'd keep adding to them. To the point where I couldn't really communicate effectively anymore because I was so scared of doing anything that God might judge me for, or some sort of higher power would judge me for, you know, otherwise I'm a bad person. Being able to drop all of that and just treat people like fellow human beings changed my life. It was wonderful no longer living in fear. Unfortunately, it was slowly being replaced by political correctness culture. You know, sort of the things you hear from people who preach intersectionality, intersectionality, which is all about rules. It's about what not to do. It's never about what to do. It's all about what not to do. It's never about feeling comfortable with yourself. It's all about feeling bad about yourself and what you shouldn't do. When you come up to someone, you're supposed to deeply think about what demographic they come from. You should know the history of their demographic and treat them according to that history, to, to, to be someone who tries to right the wrongs of the history of the way that demographic has been treated. And if you don't know much about their demographic, then you're essentially just supposed to treat them as royalty. They're not just another person. No, treat them, treat them like royalty. It's this idea that someone should think about the progressive stack at all times. The idea that you should never allow your mind to drift toward certain places or you'll be considered sexist, racist, homophobic, transphobic. Or you're one of the words that's getting used a lot now. You're, you're a fascist. Or you're literally a Nazi. I'm finding all these rules to be far more oppressive than religion ever was. And there is no way to redeem yourself. If you've been labeled as a fascist or one of those other words, you're supposed to feel really bad about yourself and be ostracized from society entirely. You're definitely supposed to lose your job. You're not even really supposed to have a bank account. You're essentially supposed to live on the street and be satisfied with that because you thought the wrong thing. You said the wrong phrase. And if you try to prove that you don't think that way or that you've changed, you're still bad and can never redeem yourself. This is why Dave Chappelle's Sticks and Stones helped me so much. Over the past year, I had fallen into a terrible depression. Some of it is based on what's happened to culture since Trump became president. This isn't blaming Trump directly. As I've said before, Trump is both a symptom and a cause. Most of it's just how society has changed, how polarized things have become. But the other main thing that has made me very depressed 
is this notion that I should live in fear and start building up these autistic lists again. But this time, have the lists be based on the progressive stack, looking through everything through the lens of intersectionality. Looking at things through those lenses has destroyed my ability to really enjoy anything. It destroyed my hope of being able to be happy, to be silly, to have fun, to be carefree, to be creative. Because if you create something that isn't according to the progressive stack or intersectionality or, you know, it isn't, it doesn't come to those standards, then you must be a bad person. And again, there is no path to redemption in the lens of intersectionality and the progressive stack. I'm hoping I can ride the wave of Dave Chappelle and throw away those rules. I'm hoping that I don't eventually have to adopt religion, you know, because it's far easier. There's, there's less fear, less stressful than this intersectionality bullshit. It's probably one of the reasons why religion is kind of becoming popular again. It sure beats the hell out of this political correctness shit. I am not going to figuratively beat myself constantly because I'm the demographic that I am. I'm not going to continually and constantly think about my privilege. I'm instead going to just treat people as fellow humans. I'm instead going to just try to be the best person I can and not virtue signal about it constantly. So yes, I am tired of living in fear. I'm not buying into an ideology that tells people to live in fear. No, God isn't love and God isn't freedom. No, being an intersectionalist doesn't make you more free to be yourself. It doesn't make you more creative. It doesn't even make you a better person. It instead makes you live in fear unless you're an oppressed demographic. No thanks.